guys, it's Proud Cat Lover, and today we're going to be doing some insect stuff. So Walmart, for the longest time, stopped selling my mothball packets, so when they got some in randomly, I bought four of the eight bags they had. So what I'm going to be doing is taking all of the mothballs, which are these deals here, taking them out and then putting new ones in. But I figured I would show you guys the boxes every time I go through a new one, just so you can see all the different variety I have now. Some of you may know, but just in case you don't, I'll put it out there. I no longer collect insects, like I do still have ones I need to pin, but aside from that, I no longer am really collecting them actively. I'm more interested now in keeping them as pets versus killing them. And it's not like I was catching a whole bunch of the same kind, because most of the time, if I already had one, or if I had a male and a female of the species, like these two here, then I would be like, you know, I don't need that one anymore, so I wouldn't catch any more of the same one, which I find is, like, something that I guess people don't completely understand because they'll tell me that I'm awful because I'm killing all these bugs. And I'm like, I only kill one, maybe two, of that certain type, and then that's it. And that's way less, obviously, than driving a car down the street in the middle of the summer is going to kill. So, <laughs> just put that out there real quick. So anyway, this is one of the boxes. I'm not going to bother to mention any names because I don't want this to be a really long video, especially because look at all the boxes here. All these, and then these two here. So yeah, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so I'll be back when I have a new box to show you. Okay guys, so here is the second box that I'm going to be showing you. This, of course, is one of my big display boxes. It has all the moths on this side that you're seeing right now. And then it has all the butterflies on the other side. So that is this box. And I will go ahead and say real quick, most of the time when I have a large, huge box like this, and if I had to guesstimate, I think this box is about two foot wide by two foot long. And I think... It is, if I had to guess, like I'm saying, about six inches deep, if I had to guess. And my dad did cut, because he built these for me, he cut a groove in here. And it's not really sturdy, so you obviously don't want to pull on it to let the plexiglass slide in. And then you can just tape it at the end and it stays closed. But anyway, like I was saying, for a box that's normally this big, I normally have at least three mothballs in here. As you can see, there's one there, one over there, and one here. When I have a smaller box, I normally just put two, unless there's a ton of insects in there, and then I go ahead and put three. Now, if of course, if there's only like five bugs in one of those small boxes, then I'll just put one, and I'll put it close to the bugs. That way, it's eliminating any chance, or at least helping to eliminate a chance, of any dermestid beetle larvae, which is the little carpet beetle larvae and whatnot, that will get in here and eat your specimens if you don't use mothballs to protect them. Okay guys, so here's the last big box that we're going to be putting some mothballs in. And I will of course add that the only reason that I like using scented mothballs is if you've ever smelt regular mothballs that have no scent added to them, they're obviously disgusting smelling and it's nasty. So I like to use lavender. It does also come in a uh, cedar scent, but I cannot stand cedar. So I have never used it. But yeah, this is probably one of my favorite setups that I have just because I absolutely love beetles. Because they're just so unique in so many different colors. They're just so cool. But of course, I really like wasps as well. So yeah. And of course, this little soldier fly has always been a favorite. He is super cool looking. Looks just like a bee. But yeah, so that is this box here. Now we'll move on to the little boxes. Okay guys, so here's the first of the small boxes and there's actually two that are empty so that's less that I have to worry about showing you guys in a small period of time. So anyway, this is all insects I purchased off of bioquipbugs.com and you do have to have a minimum of $35 before you can order, but their insects are not terrible price, and you can get quite a bit for $35, especially from other countries. Especially this one here from Madagascar is my top favorite of all insects, and you can probably see why. Absolutely gorgeous. Very beautiful, luminescent wings. But yeah, so that is this box here. Okay, guys, so here is the second small box. So I kind of have just a random mix of stuff in this one. I will say real quick that changing out the 
Mothballs is not a huge daily thing that you have to do, but you do have to do it once every one to two months just so you can keep those dermestid beetle larvae out of the box. Now the only reason I put an extra in here is sometimes I get a moth packet, mothball packet, and it only has one of the two, because there's supposed to be two in here, but there's only one in this one. So I just did that so I can use it up and it not go to waste. So anyway, that is the th second box. Okay guys, so I'm going to be doing a voiceover just because our um, heating turned on in the basement and so it was kind of loud so I figured I'd just do this instead of you guys having to listen to it. But here is the wasp and bee box and then the next one that we're going to have is going to have butterflies and I will show a couple of the butterflies. So one of them is called a spangled fritillary and that's the one I'm getting ready to show you and it has a really pretty like iridescent shiny part on its hind wings which is really beautiful and that's one thing I love about spangled fritillaries and then this poor zebra swallowtail who is missing its antennas because it's an old specimen has these really cool as you saw red lines going down its hind wings so with this box we mainly have smaller skipper butterflies we've got some uh, goat weed or the yeah the goat weed butterfly that you're getting ready to see Hind wings look just like a dead leaf, which is so cool. So that's one reason I absolutely love goat weed butterflies. So here is my very messy, very unorganized grasshopper box with a few katydids and crickets in there. So what happened is I had a bunch of extra grasshoppers before I went to this event that I volunteered at last year. And so they all kind of just got pushed into the box and I'm like, oh my gosh, it is not organized at all. So that's definitely on the agenda for the future is organizing that box. So here is my kind of random insects box. It's got some walking sticks, a praying mantis, a moth, a couple wasps, well a bee and a wasp if I saw correctly. Well actually it was a couple wasps. But here you will see the powder residue that is left over if the dermestid beetle larvae do get in your containers. And here's about how big they are. So you can see this is very tiny. This is a shed. And that's kind of the first indicator that you have dermestid beetle larvae is because they will shed their skin like that. And finding those little dust piles will show that they have been eating on your collections. So this moth here is kind of a little bit of a way to see what happens when the humidity is not high enough when you are raising caterpillars. This poor thing when it hatched out was just never able to be released so I had to keep it. Okay guys, so now that the heater has turned off and I don't have to do a voiceover anymore, here are my atlas moths. These things are gorgeous. This one here has a 10 inch wingspan so you can see when I hold my hand up to it. It's longer than my hand. <laughs> it's a very beautiful moth. To see something like this alive would just be amazing. Like look at the color pigments. It's just so cool. Very beautiful. This is probably my favorite of the insects that I've bought online but it took a lot of patience because this moth had to be in the relaxation chamber for I believe it was 14 days before I could actually move the muscles because it had been dead for such a long time. The first one I got sent versus the second one like it's drastic you can tell that this guy did not have as much food when he was a caterpillar versus this one here like the food source was completely different but of course they were several years apart when they were caught but still it's really cool. So here is the next box. We're almost done with the boxes that are from the first stack. Then this here is my really pretty Luna moth. Okay guys, so now we're going to go through all these boxes because earlier my mom was down here doing laundry and stuff. And so that's why I started talking quiet, so now she's gone upstairs. I've already put mothballs in all these while I was waiting for it to go upstairs. So now all I have to do is just show you the bugs. But yeah, it's terrible because I still do not feel comfortable 
talking on video when my family members are in the room or close by. So here's one of the beetle boxes. You can see another casualty, not recently, but this was an old spot where the moth, or not the moth, but where the uh, beetle grubs had gotten into. And if you guys noticed earlier in the video, I had showed a part um, when I was doing a voiceover where there was a little beetle grub. So you got to see what they look like and about how big they are. Okay, so here is the next box. Not going to talk a lot because I'm running low on space. So we're just going to do a quick look over of all of them. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh -huh. No way. Oh my goodness. You're so cute. Okay, so we're coming up on the last box, and I decided to go ahead and just do another voiceover, just because I'm sure you're, you know, ready to not be hearing Rose meowing a whole bunch anymore, even though I know some of you are like, oh my goodness, she's so adorable, because she is. But yeah, so coming up on the last few boxes, I'm going to be talking again soon in the video and not having to do a voiceover, but yeah. <laughs> Needless to say, I need to do an inventory sometime and see how many bugs that I actually have. I'm kind of curious now. So that might turn out being something in the future for a video is inventorying some of my insects. So that might be interesting. Alrighty guys, this is the last box. I hope you enjoyed getting to see some of my insects. Even though I sadly couldn't make it that long. So anyway guys... Thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day.